You've had some notable successes, but you've passed up some notable successes as well. Julio Iglesias? Well, it wasn't so much passing him up. <laughs> I had this idea in the 70s that sooner or later a Spanish singer would, would hit the nerve of the English market with all these tourists going there every year. So I went there deliberately to find uh, the Spanish singer who I'd take on. There were three top singers at the, at the very top at the time. One was Julio Iglesias, one was Camila Sesto, who became very, very big too, uh, and one was a guy called Junior. And at the time, he looked the better bet. He spoke perfect English. He was number one when I went there. So um, I said no to Julio and took on Junior. Uh, seven years later, my idea was right. A Spanish singer did make it big in the English market, and it was Julio. But um, Junior had a particular mean streak to him, didn't he? Oh, he, he was wonderful. He was the meanest person I ever met. <laughs> He had, he had an ability to, to drive you mad. And the funny thing is, that like so many artists, he had this enormous charm. He could drive you to the point where you just could not talk to him for his meanness. And then two days later, you, having not seen him, you'd see him, you'd give him a big hug. There was one time he came to England, and he drove me mad for a whole week. He got more and more jittery throughout the week. I thought probably because nobody knew him here, and he was used to being a star. So when he left, I hired a Rolls Royce to drive him to the airport. Paid for it myself, went to the hotel, Put him in. He looked terrified when he saw it because he thought it cost him some money. I said, no, this is from me, a gift, <laughs> a Rolls Royce to the airport on me. And when we got to the airport, he said, have you got 90 pence? I said, what for? He said, oh, I want to buy Playboy and I don't want to break into a pound. <laughs> <laughs> there was a problem with an ice cream in Brazil as well. There in, wasn't there, in which, Mexico. Which, which actually has to be the pettiest story ever in the we, music industry. We were in Mexico it? and every day for a week, everywhere we, hit, we went, there was something to pay, coffee to buy, a drink. He said, oh, oh I haven't changed my money yet. I was, have you got any money? And I paid everything day after day. Petty, it didn't matter. It wasn't money. It was the principle. Finally, it got to the Sunday afternoon, and we had to pass two hours before a TV show, and we went for a walk in the market, and he suddenly said, um, oh, I'd want an ice cream. And I said, oh, and I copied him completely. Said, oh, oh, I haven't got my money with me. And he said, well, nor have I. He said, call someone from the record company and tell them to come and buy an ice cream for us. Literally. Yes, and I couldn't put any money in the box, so I told him I hadn't got any. So I had to go to the phone and make a reverse charge call to the, to the home of the head of the record company. And I said, Junior wants an ice cream. And we sat down, we waited for an hour, and a man from the record company came, and he bought us both an ice they cream. They literally sent some. It says as much <laughs> about the record company as about the artist, doesn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, It's yes. extraordinary, the lengths they we had to. We had a cornet with a piece of chocolate. <laughs> you remember, remember it. To this you day. remember it well. <laughs>